we are to do one thing and one thing alone, and that is to love. So a week before his wife turned 45, a husband asked what she wanted for her birthday. And she replied and said, I'd like to be 10 again. So he said, okay. So on her birthday, he woke up and he fixed her Pop-Tarts and Cocoa Puffs. Then he had a full day planned where they would get to go to Six Flags and ride all of the rides. They would get to go to... um, all of the different restaurants in there and eat all of the greasy food, all of that stuff. They spent about six hours at this, at this theme park. Next, he said, we are going to go right across the street to Wet n' Wild, and we're going to go to the water park for four more hours. So they went to the water park for water sliding, all kinds of fun in the sun. Next, after that, he said, we're going to go watch a movie together. So they picked the favorite Shrek the Third. And they went to the movie theater and watched Shrek the Third in a crowded theater, popcorn, candy, soda, all the fixings. On the way home, when they got done with with, uh, with the uh, movie, they went to Chuck E. Cheese, grabbed some pizza, watched the little robots do their robot thing, and played a few video games. When the wife finally got home, she fell into bed that night, and he said, do you feel like 10 again? She said, I was talking about my dress size. (laughs) Got to listen, guys. Last week, we talked about being single. This week, we are going to talk about marriage. Married people, I want to call out married people today. Again, to you who are single, you are just as important. This is not a slam or anything on being single, but today we're going to celebrate being married. So I want to call all of you out, and we are going to start with how many years you all have been married, starting with year number one. Who got to celebrate one year of marriage this past year? Woohoo! One year. How about five years? Nice. Ten years? That's okay. Fifteen years? Woo! Yay! Awesome. Twenty years? We're in the 20-year mark. Sixteen years we've been married. How about 25? 25 years. 30 years? There are some hands more. Yay. 35 years. Woohoo. All right. 40? Very good. 45 years. Yay. I love it. 50? Oh, yay. 51. Got to have that one in there. Tell you, every, every year counts, right? <laughs> How about 55 years? 55 years? 60? 58. Man, I love it. Woo! That's even better. I love it. 60? Did I just do 60? 60 years? 65 years? Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I know you're watching online. They celebrated 67 years of marriage this past week. 67 years. Let me tell you something about you married people. Being married is hard, isn't it? Being single is hard. Being married is hard. We're going to talk about marriage today. We're going to talk about all of the wonderful things, but today I don't want to talk about how hard it is. I want to talk about how it can be easy, all right? I want to talk about how marriage can be so simple, so easy that anybody can do it, all right? So we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 5, if I haven't mentioned that. We're going to be in verse 21. 
It's one of the most popular marriage verses in the Bible. We're going to be in verse 21. Paul writes to this, uh, writes about this at the church of Ephesus. He says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So underline that whole verse. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Verse 22, wives, submit yourselves to your, to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself, to himself, as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Verse 28. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. Verse 31. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. We read about that in Genesis, right? This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. Ephesians chapter 5, the book that I was uh, quoting out of last week, I'm going to quote again. This is The Meaning of Marriage. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Keller, they write about this. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul quotes Genesis chapter 2, verses 24, namely that when a man marries, he leaves his father and mother and cleaves to his wife. I think this is them still talking. Think of the historical and social context of that statement. Ancient cultures put enormous emphasis on a parent-child relationship. Pleasing your parents, being faithful to the wishes of your parents was all important. In more traditional cultures, even today, parents and grandparents are given great authority and uh, and children are expected to heed their parents' wishes above all other requests. And there is a certain warrant for this kind of respect. By the time that you are a young adult, they write that you should be willing to admit that the single relationship that has most shaped you are, for good or for bad, your relationship with your parents. Amen? Amen. You wouldn't be alive without them. I would not be alive without my parents because I was a goofy kid. And all but a few parents have made enormous sacrifices for the well-being of their children. They continue and say, and yet in the midst of these patriarchal cultures and in the face of these realities, God says, I didn't put a parent and a child in the garden. I put a husband and wife, right? I didn't put a parent and child in the garden. I put a husband and wife. When you marry your your spouse, you must supersede all other relationships, even the parental relationships. So this morning, I want to take a look at this passage. I want to take a look at Ephesians chapter 5. I only want to talk about two things. I want to talk about wives, and I want to talk about husbands, all right? I want to talk about the relationship between the two, and I want to figure out and, and combine them together and figure out the easiest way to have marriage together. So we're going to start in verse 22. Here's what it says. We're going to start with the wives first, okay? We'll do the easy part. You were supposed to laugh because I'm a dad or I'm a husband. Wives, (laughs) submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to to their husbands in everything. Here's the all famous word that we hear all the time about wives, right? Submit. That's the word that we hear. Wives, submit to your husbands. Here's the Greek word. You ready to laugh at it? Hupatasso. Hupatasso. 
It's used in verse 21. It means to relinquish one's rights and to fall in line by willingly placing oneself under another th- uh, another's authority or care. This is what the military uses. This is what they use when they say submit because you are supposed to come under the th- authority of a superior official and obey their commands. That's what that word means is to submit. Now, The emphasis is on a wife who willingly makes herself subject to her husband's authority and care. I'm going somewhere with this. Hold on tight, all right? She falls in line under his love. Did you hear that? She submits to his love, okay? This is the freeing part. It is a voluntary response to God's will to give up one, one's independent rights to her husband. A Christian wife, did you hear anywhere in that scripture that a Christian wife was supposed to obey? Did you hear anywhere in there that it said, oh, that's later on. As Christians are called to obey their parents and slaves to their masters, it doesn't talk about obey anywhere. Likewise, a husband isn't supposed to treat his wife or servant as a child. She's not supposed to be a servant or a child or a slave to you. She is supposed to be your companion. Amen? A wife isn't a slave. Don't you ever order them around. At your ever beck and call, she doesn't need to go make you a sandwich. You go make yourself a sandwich. All right? Thank you. Go make yourself a sandwich, right? But see, I I even think beyond all of that, there's even a higher calling for wives, uh, something even, even better. Because a wife who submits to her husband as to the Lord follows in the footsteps of Christ. A wife's attitude should be the exact same as Jesus. What did Jesus do? Jesus surrendered his life for us, didn't he? He gave it up for us. He gave everything up. He, he gave up the, himself to the will of the Father. He humbled himself for the forgiveness of our sins, something that we did not deserve. And, and when a Christian woman submits to God and to her husband, she will experience, see, and I, I only can only say this because I wrote it, right? Um, when a Christian woman submits to God and to her husband, she will experience a release and fulfillment that can come no other way. And the result will be an environment. You're going to have an environment where when you're working together as one, it will be an environment of intimacy. It will be an environment of growth. It will be an environment of a ministry partnership that will make a difference in her home and in the world. Wives, you are amazing people. I do not know how you do what you do, but you do it, and you do it so well and so great, and I appreciate you all for what you do. So thank you, thank you, thank you, wives. All right, husbands, are you ready? Because the rest of the passage applies to us. Here we go. Verse 25. Husbands, we are supposed to do what? Love your wives. We could just stop there if you want. But we're going to keep going. Love your wives. How? Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. Love your wives that much. Verse 28. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. To become one, right? We're going to talk about that in a little bit. He who loves his wife loves himself. Oh my goodness, that's big. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it just as Christ does the church. For we are all members of his body. I was just going to end it right here and say, husbands, there is only one thing and one focus that we should be doing in our entire marriage, but I had to keep going. 
Because there is one thing and one thing alone that we need to do as a part of our marriage, but it goes beyond just the four-letter word. There is so much packed in to this four-letter word. So husbands, here, I'm going to give you the end of the story, and we're going to go back to the beginning, okay? Husbands, we are to do one thing and one thing alone, and that is to love. Love. So in the Greek word, we talk about it a lot. Everybody probably knows it. The word is agape, right? Agape, we are supposed to have an unconditional love. Love here does whatever needs to be done. It doesn't consider the cost. It doesn't keep a tab. Whatever it is needed, it gives. Love is giving. It gives without looking for anything in return. Husbands, we are supposed to have an unrelentless, unconditional, unmatchable love for our wives. Amazing, right? So the first thing that he talks about here is this sacrifice, this sacrifice of love. And here's how we want, we want to look at it. We want to look at it from the viewpoint of Jesus. How did Jesus love? We we always want to emulate Jesus, right? He loved us unto death, even death on a cross. Jesus even laid down his life to give us life, that type of love, right? In the same way, a husband should be willing to lay down his life to give life to his bride. Husbands, we need to be sacrificing for our wives, our time, our affection, our finances, our hobbies. We should prioritize her all the way up, right? All the way up. You see, the directions are not just wives submit and husbands rule, right? I mean, husbands do rule, but, you know, that's a different kind of rule. That's like we rule, like we rock, right? Rather, husbands love like Jesus Christ loved. How did Christ love? What did he do? He gave himself up completely. Christ loved us so much that he gave everything, even his own life. He gave up his interest, he gave up his desires, he gave up his will, and he gave up everything for the church. Everything that husbands do is to be for the benefit of their wives. And this is exactly how Christ loved us. He, he did not do what was best for him, but what was best for us. Christ desired to do this, and husbands, we should desire to give everything to our wives. Everything to our wives. We should listen to our wives, right, about everything and lead so that her interests are always above his. Mr. Cress, I loved your devotion because it fits so well. He he listened to the Christian radio so they could have something to talk about. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. But he wanted to have a genuine conversation with his wife. And so he turned on the radio so that he could hear the Christian music, so that he could hear what all of the MCs were saying, so that when he got home, he could have a talk with his wife, so he could give up something, so he could give up something for his wife. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be Christian radio, but we should all as husbands be willing to give something up so that we could sit down at the table and have a conversation with our wife. We should love that much. But see, in the same way here about this love, there aren't any loopholes. You're not allowed as husbands, listen to this, this is important. You're not allowed to stop loving her because she is not yielding to your leadership. Jesus Christ gave up everything. That kind of love, right? You're not to stop loving her because she does not consider you, because she does not help you. There are no exceptions to unconditional love. You do not love as long as she is kind, as long as she is not nagging, as long as your honey-do list continues to grow and you don't do it, because I do that sometimes. Remember that you picked her. Did you, husbands, did you pick your wives? Wives, did you pick your husbands? You chose each other, right? You chose her, Christ chose us. Christ loved when we were rebellious unto his authority, right? Husbands, we must continue to love our wives in all circumstances. 
So this brings us to a very important point about love because we wanna talk about leadership here. You see, when we love, when we love somebody else, leadership is not about telling them what to do. This is never directed to the husband. He is never told that he has that right at all. Rather, the leadership is about taking responsibility for the family. We are to take responsibility for our family. Leadership is understanding that us husbands are the ones accountable to God for this family. We must preach the gospel in our homes, husbands. Not only that, but as husbands, we should be preaching the gospel to our wives. Amen? We should be teaching and helping and encouraging them. Look at Genesis chapter 3 here for a minute. Genesis chapter 3 and the sin that occurred in the Garden of Eden. Did you ever notice who God called first? Whose fault was it? He looked to Adam. He looked to the leader. Men, you are responsible for the welfare of the family in all of its areas. But most importantly, we are to love them and encourage them spiritually. Only when you are loving Christ and pursuing Christ can husbands lead their families properly. Take a look at it this way. You are not the CEO of the corporation. It is not Husband's House LLC, right? The more that you pursue Christ, what we're gonna understand, husbands, is that we will love our wife rightly and lead our family in the godly way. Paul even presses this imagery in the kind of love that husbands are to have even further. If you look at verse 28 and 29, husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. And so this, this means that you don't hate your body, but you love it and you cherish it. Thus, Paul quotes Genesis. He says in, Genesis, he says in verse 31, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, that the two become one, Right? She is your body as much as you are your body, right? You are unified together. The two of you are now one flesh. You do not lead her in a hateful way or a harsh way. You don't lead your body, your own body in a hateful way or a harsh way, right? You lead it in a loving and compassionate way. Husbands must see the marriage relationship in this way. She is your very body, And so then verse 33, it offers a summary to all of this. It says, men, love your wives. So as men love your wives, wives submit and respect your husbands. It doesn't matter if he doesn't deserve it. We don't deserve the love of Christ, and yet Christ submitted to us. So wives will honor the headship that is given to the husband and help him in that role for the family. The the wife will be his helper through the process and companion, and wives will choose to respect their husbands in their words and actions. Wives will show that respect in public and in private and yielding to his best interests above your own, just as Christ has showed us. They're, they're one of my favorite movies that, that I had watched, a Christian movie, is called Fireproof. And this movie depicts this very scenario perfectly. Ephesians chapter 5. It was an unruly family, an unruly couple together trying to figure out how to do marriage together. They couldn't figure it out. So then they went to the Bible. They prayed together over it. They they ended up getting back together. They, the man just kept bringing her flowers and chocolates and going to work and doing all of this, these things for her, and she didn't care at all. She didn't want anything to do with him, but she kept, he kept doing it. He kept being relentless, relentless love over and over and over. He would go and do things for her. He cooked her supper one time. She came home and said, I don't want anything to do with supper. He did the dishes. Men, all oh, husband, do the dishes, all right? He did the dishes for her. He cleaned the house. He did the laundry. All of this stuff, he was trying to help and be a companion for her, and she still didn't understand it. It wasn't until the very end of the movie, after all of this stuff that he had did, she finally got it. She finally understood what was happening, and there was a beautiful reunion at the end. You see, when husbands love their wives like Christ, 
and when wives submit to their husbands like Christ, the marriage will be easy. That's easy. It will be a joyful blessing. Each other's needs and desires will be met by the other person when we live these words. It won't be this commanding thing. But when we make marriage about ourselves, what we, when we want to get something out of it, when we want to look at ourselves, this picture gets destroyed. And sinfulness rules in the marriage that way. So I want to close on two things to help you remember. And the first one is this. Every husband and wife sh- needs to, at some point in time, and should be filled with the Spirit and remember, that the, remember the Spirit to be able to do all of this consistently through them. We need to be praying together. We need to be working through Scripture together at some point in time. Let me tell you this. This is a process. This is all a process. It's not done overnight. But at some point in time, we all need to be filled with the Spirit. We all need to be believers in a marriage. And the second thing is this. When you look at your marriage, I want you to remember Jesus Christ. I want you to remember his love. I want you to remember the sacrifice that he gave. I want you to understand that he gave everything for sinners like me, for sinners like you. And every single day, I try and learn how to use and apply that kind of love. Because that kind of love is hard for me to comprehend. It is such a powerful love. And so during your marriage, I want you to remember that when the times get tough, when you have to have hard conversations with each other, I want you to remember Christ's love. I want you to remember what he did for you. We are only here because of him. Amen? And we need to remember and apply that to our lives. Married couples, it is such a joyful, joyful thing to be married. And if we can do it together through Christ and be unified, it gets so much easier. If you ever want to talk about any of this stuff, you're welcome to come up here. I can pray with you. We can talk through it. If you want to spend some time outside of here during the week or something and have a better conversation about all of this, please don't hesitate to call and get a hold of me. I'm always available. The elders are always available to talk and and go and be and do whatever we need to do. We want to help and be a part of your lives. And so if you want any of that, please, please let me know. Can I pray with you? Let's pray. So Father, we want to lift up married couples today. We want to celebrate the fact that you have bound these people together. And I pray, Father, that we can continue to learn as married couples this relentless, unconditional love. Father, this morning, I want to lift up the wives. I want to thank you so much for for giving husbands and men a companion in life. I ask that you can help and mold, Father, the wives in the way that they need to be. Father, I I want you to help teach them this word to be submissive to their husbands. And husbands, I want to pray for you. And Father, I want to lift up all of the husbands and and pray that we can learn that relentless, unconditional love towards our wives. Father, give us hope and joy as we do that. Father, teach us to be strong and courageous in in our relationships. And Father, I pray that as the weeks unfold, Father, uh, that y- you might bring us stronger and stronger together as married couples. Father, I want to thank you for your love, your love that you sent down, Father. I want to thank you for Jesus, who is, is the, uh, the shining light of love in our lives. And I pray, Father, that we can see and apply all of the things that you've taught us about him in our daily lives. We love you so much. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.